AP Bio Topic 1.1 is on the structure of water and hydrogen bonding. It's a decent place to start the AP Bio curriculum because no life can happen without it. We're all like 70% water, so what's so great about it? Short answer is that it's polar. Every individual water molecule has a slightly negative side and a slightly positive side to it because there's polar covalent bonds between the hydrogen atoms and the oxygen atom. So therefore, each molecule is like a little magnet. And when you have trillions of little magnets bouncing around and flowing everywhere in every drop of water, those magnets attract and repel from one another. And those are hydrogen bonds. And they are what give water its unique properties. Water can stick to itself very well. It sticks to other polar surfaces very well. It takes a lot of energy to evaporate and it takes a lot of force to break its surface. Water's stickiness allows plants to defy gravity and bring water up from the ground. And it also allows organisms to float on the top of it. Finally, water is really good at dissolving polar substances, which makes it really, really good for metabolic reactions. AP Biology Topic 1.2 is on the elements of life. A big idea in biology is that all living things need to take in nutrients and remove waste in the form of organic molecules. The word organic means from a living thing, but it also means it's carbon-based. Here are the elements that are the most essential to life, but carbon is the most important because it provides the backbone for all organic molecules and therefore the basis for cells. Carbon atoms are special because they can form up to four covalent bonds, which makes them a really good building block for the large complex molecules that make up living things. Our four main groups of biomolecules are carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. And here are the elements that make up each. Because carbon is so versatile and can form four covalent bonds, some molecules might have the same atoms, but those atoms might be arranged in different ways. Those are called isomers. Geometric isomers have atoms arranged differently around a double bond, while enantiomers are isomers with a central carbon atom that look like mirror images of one another. Let's talk about topic 1.3, introduction to biological macromolecules. In our last video, we briefly mentioned the four main groups of biological molecules. Three out of four of them we refer to as polymers, which are large molecules that are big long chains of individual subunits called monomers. So in other words, if I want to make a polymer, I have to link a lot of monomers into a big long chain. So let's say if I want to make a protein, I have to take multiple amino acids and link them up together. And that is accomplished through dehydration synthesis. So let's say I have two amino acids. One has an OH at the end and the other has an H at the end. If I use an enzyme to remove these two groups from each other, it's going to form a water molecule and a new covalent bond between those two monomers. But what if I want to go from a polymer to a monomer? That is hydrolysis, taking an OH, putting it on one monomer, and an H on the other monomer using a water molecule, and then splitting the covalent bond between those two. Hydrolysis breaks down, dehydration synthesis builds up. Hey everybody, let's get into topic 1.4. This is about the monomers of all of our four groups of biomolecules. The monomer of carbohydrates is called a monosaccharide. Those are usually rings of carbon and oxygen, and they're a major source of cellular energy. When you have two rings, it's called a disaccharide, and these rings are linked together by what are called glycosidic linkages. The monomers of proteins are amino acids. All amino acids have some of the same structures. They have an amino group, a carboxyl group, and what's called an R group, or a variable side chain. That could be positive, negative, polar, or nonpolar. The properties of that R group or side chain determine a lot of the protein's structure and therefore its function. Amino acids are linked together by what are called peptide bonds. Lipids are a mixed bag, but they're all nonpolar. The monomer of a lipid is what's called a fatty acid. Those are characterized by long chains of carbon and hydrogen. If there's a double bond, the chain is bent, and that's what's called unsaturated. But if there's no double bond and the chain is not bent, then it's saturated. We'll get into nucleotides in 1.6. Topic 1.5, talk about biological polymers. If I take a whole ton of monosaccharides and put them in a really long chain, that's called a polysaccharide. Polysaccharides can either be linear or branched, and they can be used for energy storage or for structure. Linking a bunch of amino acids gives you a polypeptide. Multiple polypeptides can give us a protein. The structure and function of a protein is determined at four levels. A protein's primary structure is its sequence of amino acids. Its secondary structure is how those chains fold or coil depending on the hydrogen bonds between the backbones of the amino acids. The shape a polypeptide takes depending on its side chain interactions are called its tertiary structure. These are kind of a combination of the coils and folds from the previous level. If you mess up the interactions between the side chains at the tertiary level, then the protein breaks. Quaternary structure is where polypeptides combine into one functional protein. DNA and RNA, nucleic acids, are made of one or two really long chains of nucleotides. More details in the next video. Topic 1.6 is all about nucleic acids. DNA and RNA are polynucleotide strands. Therefore, they're made of thousands of connected nucleotides, which is the monomer. There are five different kinds of nucleotides. 
but all nucleotides have a phosphate and a pentose sugar. DNA sugar is deoxyribose, RNA sugar is ribose. The third component of every nucleotide is its nitrogenous base. There's A, C, G, T, and U. A and G are called purines because their nitrogenous base has two rings. C, T, and U are called pyrimidines because their nitrogenous base only has one ring. These nucleotides are linked into chains via their sugars and phosphates. In DNA molecules, these two long chains of nucleotides meet in the middle and form a ladder shape, with each strand oriented in opposite directions. A's always match up with T's, and C's always match up with G's. RNA only has one strand of nucleotides, and they have U's instead of T's.